Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman and it's Azure Friday. I'm here with Talika Chowdhury. How are you? I'm doing good, Scott. Excited to be here. I am very excited to be here because you know I am a huge fan of App Service on Azure, and I personally use Linux App Service for all of my stuff. So I know I'm going to learn something that I'm going to be able to put into production right after this show. We're going to hit stop, and I'm going to immediately want to figure out how I can make these patterns work for me on my application. So I'm happy to learn. Woohoo! Exactly. That's right. So what do you have for me? So today I'm here to talk about the sidecar pattern. The sidecar pattern allows you to add different components to your web application. We all know that web applications need things like logging, caching, monitoring, and it is nice to have it run as heterogeneous components that you can plug and play into your application. And that's exactly what Sidecar lets you do. So for my first demo, did you have a question? Scott? Well, I was thinking out loud there for a second because you know, you can do these things in process or out of process, or in this case, in another container. And there must be some security benefits, some resiliency benefits. But then you said plug and play. It's almost like containers are the new size of our of our building blocks. Yes, absolutely. So we could do it in process also, and you get all the benefits of in process. Like, you know, you could have better performance if it's in process. You can share everything. You don't have to worry about things. But it's very hard to maintain things which are in process. So now every time there is a change in the way, for example, how caching is implemented, you have to go and change your main application, redeploy the application to make sure it works. With sidecars, since these are different components, it's easier to maintain. And at some point, if you want to switch out something, so for example, I have a demo here for Datadog, but later on you might switch it out to use, I don't know, Elastic, Dynatrace, and you can do it very easily without changing your main application and redeploying your code. Very cool. All right, let's see some demo. So here I have a application called, um, well, it doesn't matter what it's called, it's a .NET application. And you can see that I've tried to simulate some conditions over here. Oh, ignore the .NET 6, it's actually .NET 8. I don't know why I haven't changed it. But, you know, I can simulate things like through an exception, I can do a slow request, now, what I want with this application is that I want to integrate Datadog because I like some of the watchdog or reporting features that Datadog has. To do that, I go into Deployment Center, and all I have to do is add a container for Datadog. Now, here you will notice that my main application is also running as a container. So we have two variations of applications on app service. One is code-based apps and the second is container-based apps. Right now, the sidecar is available for container-based apps, but in the coming couple of months, it should be available for code-based apps as well. So here you can click on add to add a container, but I already have one added. So you can see over here that I've specified the name, where my container is residing, now, in this case, I actually took a container provided by Datadog. So behind the scenes, we are working with Azure native ISV service providers like Datadog, Dynatrace, and Elastic. And they have their curated images that they have you know, provided us. So we've taken the curated image, added it to my ACR, and specified things like what's the image, image tag, and I'm all set. So now, when I simulate my application, I can just go to Datadog and you will notice right away that it has recognized my app because this is the environment I'm integrating with. I can go to the service page and you should see some of the metrics automatically. I didn't write a single line of code. So it has automatically picked up my service. It has taken the requests which are flowing into the service. So you can see that some exceptions were thrown. Um, you can get the slow request, for example, over here, which was taking 54 seconds. I can even go into things like logs and look at what are the logs from my application, do pattern matching, searching on the logs, even configure alerts on the log. 
and again without writing or changing a single line of code in my application. So when you make a sidecar application, there I saw that you could have a main and four sidecars, so that's five total containers. What makes four sidecars and what makes makes one main? Can I access that Datadog one like from the open internet? No. So the Datadog is just local to your environment. What we do internally is we configure a virtual network and the main is the one which exposes the port 80 and 443. So all requests or HTTP requests will only go to the main. But Datadog is added as a sidecar, which means that it cannot be accessed from the outside, but the main app can contact Datadog locally, just like it's running a local process. Okay. So the, the main one, which is the motorcycle in this sidecar example, can talk to the sidecar. But then I noticed that you, when you logged into Datadog, we were, we're getting Datadog as a service effectively. They're getting all of that telemetry. Is that telemetry flowing from the sidecar? And is it running still within Azure? And it's running uh, the Datadog service within my, my VNet? Or is it going out into the open internet and then back down into Datadog? So right now, the integration that I have done is actually going off in the sidecar is going off to the internet and sending data to the, it's, it's an agent. And mm -hmm. the agent sends the request or the telemetry off to Datadog backend, which in this case, since it is a native ISV partner, this instance of Datadog that I'm running is actually on Azure. So oh, I'm, cool. I'm within the whole Azure infrastructure. However, we do have the option that if you don't want to use the Azure native service infrastructure, in that case, you could just integrate with Datadog and that would work too, but it would go off the Azure data center and go into the Datadog data center. Excellent. It sounds like a lot of flexibility. And then this was very easy for you to set up by just adding that Datadog container and they integrate so nicely, as you point out, running in Azure. Yes, and we've been working for the last few months to make sure that the amount of changes that you need to do is minimal. All you need to do is add a few app settings like, you know, what's your API key, what's your subscription ID, and so on, and everything is all set up. When people think about an app service, I think sometimes they incorrectly believe that they can have one app service per one app service plan. But it feels like an app service plan, which is effectively a you know a virtual machine of sorts. I run a uh, a premium V three, a P zero V three. Um, you know, it's got four. You know, mine, mine has four gigs of RAM. It's very affordable. I've got overhead. I'm running a Linux container in that now. When I run my sidecar it's running inside that same app service plan. And if I, I can run as many as I can fit, I can run up to four sidecars and they all fit in that same app service plan. Yes, absolutely. So it fits in the same app service plan. Um, well, every application is kind of different. So you might want to do performance testing and make sure everything works and you might want to go to a higher SKU. But our testing has shown that, you know, one of the P0 V3s work really well for most of scenarios like this, like caching, observability, logging. Um, it, it, we get pretty good performance. It's almost like it's just a process running within that VM. Yeah, yeah. I know it's not the point of this video, but I just want to say a shout out to the, the P0 V3, P1 V3, all the V3 premiums, really affordable really, really fast. I was so impressed. I just upgraded my app service plan. Uh, I had an original uh, P1 V2 and I upgraded to a P0 V3 and just everything got better and it actually got cheaper and it's better and more performance. So big fan of the V3 uh, app services. Yeah. So I'm now moving on to another scenario. I also wanted to mention we have the same kind of a blog for Dynatrace and we are hmm. working on an elastic one. So it's all coming out very soon. Very cool. Now moving on to a different app and just showing a little bit of an AI kind of a demo. So when Phi 3 came out, I was very excited about it because I think it's great for applications which wants to have a little bit of chat functionality, but maybe do not want the entire overhead of running a full LLM. And SLM is a, is a great alternative, I think. I was also excited about the ONNX model. I somehow can't 
pronounce it without tripping over, but it is the Open Neural Network Exchange model, which basically allows you to create these portable uh, AI models that you can run on various kinds of hardware. So this is an example where I created a Python app and I am running my SLM as a sidecar over here. So before I go to show the demo, I want to point out that this is CPU based. I'm not using GPU over here. As you can see, I'm on the P2B3. In fact, I tested it out. It can also work on a P0B3. Just depends on the amount of load you have. Um, just showing the code just a little bit and there's not much. So firstly, everything is a container. So I took the P3 code or the P3 model actually. Mm -hmm. And what I did was that I have copied the, the CPU model into my container. So all this is doing is taking the CPU model locally from my box, copying it into the container. And I created an API on top of it, just, just so that people can call it. So this is the predict API that I created it. I'm passing in the same things like a chat template, so the prompt, generating the response, and then passing on the tokens to whichever client calls this API. And so then, the, you're putting that 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 phi three model, the mini model, in a layer of its own, so that this is now self-contained. You have a CPU-based small language model encapsulated entirely within a Docker file, and thus within a sidecar. Yes, exactly. Very cool. Very cool. So we have the API URL, which is calling it locally. Now let's go ahead and see it actually works. So I'll say, what is Azure App Service? And hit send. And so the main that, one is your Python, and the sidecar is the model. The sidecar is the model. I created the API, which is like the layer on top of the model, which has exposes the function in Python. But I have over here another implementation where I'm doing a local rag. Um, so I have a local vector database that you can feed in your data. In this case, I'm just using markdown files. Mm. And this is, this is in .NET. So it doesn't matter. And that's the beauty of Sidecar, that you could have you know, a backend, which is in this case .NET, but my front end is still the Python app that I had. I can go ahead and switch out my model and use something else and not Phi3. And as long as it exposes similar kind of functions, I don't even need to change my main app. You know, that's a, it's a very elegant way to get, I mean, you didn't need an orchestrator, you didn't need a Docker Compose, you didn't, this wasn't a Kubernetes level complexity of microservices. It was a sidecar, and that's a great, a great point where you you're getting, uh, you're you're following a pattern that sidecar pattern, and maybe in the future you'll graduate to something big, maybe you'll go full AKS. But for 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 so many times when I would have tried to make all of this work on one container, using a container as the building block, I think is just really really genius. And as a as a sidecar pattern, I really appreciate it. And I also want to mention, I have a couple of other blogs. Um, so we have the Redis sidecar. Sometimes you want to have a local cache. Mm. Um, that's a very common app service or a web app thing. And in this case, I've implemented Redis as a local cache and can run it on the same VM and you could get all the benefits from the cache. So. I think that that's a cool example to try out as well. Yeah. It also calls out, it's funny, um, I've always felt that Azure uh, App Service has always been very generous with memory. I've always felt like the thing that you give us the most of, it's not IOPS, it's not CPU, it's memory. So I tend to cache a lot. So uh, the idea of, of, of holding, taking advantage of that, and in this case, using it for a local small Redis cache is a really smart idea. And all of these blogs are available on the Azure App Service blog that you've hosting here in, in GitHub Pages. Yes, it is. And we'll, we'll keep on adding more scenarios as we go through things, um, because I think Sidecar adds itself to having a lot of scenarios. 
my last question as we head out is this sidecar pattern with containers seems very elegant, but it reminds me of how Kudu and the app service extensions used to work in the Windows app service days. Is, is it similar? Yes, so we still have the Kudu. It, it actually runs as a sidecar, but it's one of our sidecars, if you will. Mm. Like, you know, you don't have access to it as well as we do. Um, site extensions is a great thing. We used to have it for Windows app service, and that was something which was missing in Linux app service. And when we started building on sidecars, that was one of the things we had in our mind that, you know, I we have to provide that same functionality. And sidecar lets you do exactly that. So create a site extension. Site extension was a different process running with your website. In this case, it is a container. But as far as you're concerned, it doesn't matter because it's all running on the same VM and, you know, sharing all the goodness that is there for your website. All the goodness that is there. Very, very well said. Well, this is great. I'm going to go figure out how I can implement the sidecar pattern with my Linux app service. And I hope you all do as well. Thank you so much, Tulika, for, for chatting with us today. I am learning all about the sidecar pattern today on Azure Friday. <music> 